He ate the, the, the he ate the plastic bag and the steak. He ain't eating five eggs. The other dog are walking by it, he kept walking. Right by it. Right by it. Why would I waste my time? Yeah, because he ain't hungry. Why would I waste my time? He don't want it. Why would I wish you see what I'm saying? Those are the fighters I'm looking for. They ate that plastic bag and the steak. That's what I'm looking for. He hungry. Them the fighters I look for, and I look for in the middle. I don't care how many push-ups you do, how many jumping jacks you do, how hard you can hit, and that, none of that matters to me. None of it. Because it's useless if your mind is not right. I don't care your talent is useless if your mind is not right. That's that's interesting that you say that because I, I was in the gym and I heard Andrew Council, you know, talking to young fighters. He said, I shouldn't have to tell you to do certain things. You should want it in your in your heart and gut. And so I wanted it so bad because my life wasn't good. You didn't have to tell me to do nothing. Nope, nothing. If you put me in the ring with anybody, it's a rat. I wasn't in there to play. If you tell me to hit that speed bag, I'm breaking it. You tell me to hit that heavy bag, I'm destroying it. You tell me to shadow box, anybody in that gym going to stop what they're doing to look at me like, damn, he possessed. That's how you train. You see God going to shadow box me. That's not shadow boxing, man. That's playing. You want to see what shadow boxing is? Go watch Bruce Lee. That's shadow boxing. You know what I mean? That's shadow boxing. And, and, and now, with, now, in today's time, with the, the social media age, do you think that's hurt the sport of boxing? Where everybody is looking to put those videos up, where they're hitting the mitts real fast, or, or those instant clips that I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you what messed the game up. And it, and this this is I ain't gonna say it's a good or bad, but Floyd's shoulder roll messed the game up. Why you say that? Because he's he's he mastered it, and it's beautiful, and it looks so easy. But everybody trying to do it and ain't doing it and getting hit. Mm -hmm. I sit there and watch. I watch so many fighters, man, do it and get knocked out trying to do it. I watch fighters in the gym keep doing it to look like Floyd. Boom, boom. Like, yo, put your hand up. But no, it's all about looking like Floyd. It's all about looking like Floyd. But now it, 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 it has diluted boxing, you know what I mean? But they don't understand the mastery and the time that he put into learning that. So now everybody's doing it, even the amateurs, a lot of amateurs, you know what I mean? They try to do it, but then you got coaches that, that, that sign off on it. <laughs> and they're doing it wrong. You're doing it wrong. So with that being said, what is the main thing that young fighters should be focused on? Fundamentals, their footwork. Think about this. If you go into if you go into a club and there's five people dancing, you don't have to be able to dance to tell who's the worst dancer. You don't you don't have to be a dancer, you don't have to be a professional dancer to tell who don't have coordination. So when you want to box, the first thing you should work on is your footwork. You say the foot, don't forget your hands, your footwork. When you're a baby, do you learn how to how to crawl with do you learn how to walk on your hands before your feet? <laughs> yeah, you need your feet first. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Your feet is the it's the first important fundamental of offense and defense. Your feet. Forget your hands, your feet. Remember, a boxing stance is the angle. It's a certain stance your feet should be in, okay? And it's you're not gonna comfortably Stay in that position for 45 minutes if you don't practice it. You're not going to move left to right, vertical to lateral, and moving all around the ring on angles in that position if you don't master it first. So people say, okay, step like this, and they do it for a couple months a year, but they don't master it. So as they begin doing it wrong and wrong, they master it wrong. So you ever see a person in the ring, even in pro fights, they start throwing punches and try to throw them fast and stumble over their feet. Matter of fact, if you watch a fight with J-Rock, mm -hmm. When he linked, I forgot who he was fighting. He linked, turned, and came out with the uppercut, knocked him out. That was, that, and was that the herd fight? Okay, I, I think so. He stepped like this and threw the uppercut. And the reason why he was able to do that because he didn't step with the punch. He threw a combination. He the, uh, her, he threw the combination. He threw one. When he threw this one, he went to throw the three, but his, he leaned forward. When he leaned forward, his head came over his left knee, which should never happen because he that mean telling me he didn't practice stepping first. His fundamentals was off. Because even if he threw that combination, he should have never leaned his foot or his head over his knee. That's a vulnerable position. That's why you learn how to step first. So oh, you never put yourself in vulnerable position. Fight. Somebody say it was a Charlo fight. Okay, Charlo. Yeah, I don't know one of them. Yeah, Charlo. There it go. There it go. There it go. Who said that? A couple of people. You got uh, Rock Pitts, uh, Boxer Kelly. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my spot. Who that? Uzi? Who busy? Yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. We, 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 we logged in, huh? Yeah, we, yeah.
So, but, you know, just going back to talking about that as far as the, the fundamentals of, of, of the sport. So you're saying that's one of the things that, that people are lacking right now is the, is the footwork. Wait, I got a pure example for you right now. You said Rock Pitts on that candy man? He's a, he's a prime example. He's a prominent attorney right there. You're going to ask him where he took his son to train and what was going on. Son was getting headaches. Trainer just told him to go for it. You strong. You can do it. He's going home telling me, Coach, I'm thank you. When he got with me first, I said, no, you're doing everything wrong. You've been boxing for how long? Oh, no, no, no. And he told me, I've been boxing for a year, nine months. And I'm looking like, nah, it's impossible. Because the coach was about making money. It wasn't about teaching fundamentals and making sure he mastered fundamentals and become a champion. It wasn't about that. It was about making money today. And it happens all the time. All the time. Especially when you see parents dropping their kids off in the gym. Their kids 10, 13 years old. And you had a trainer here who don't know boxing, who's never took a punch himself a day in his life. But here it is, he's telling these kids to get in the ring. And these parents drop them off, but then when they pay the kids to learn discipline, but they don't know they're getting their head, their kids and getting their head beaten. Boom, boom. Boom. And the coach, I'm keep going. And he crying and going for it. Boom, boom, boom. And he's yelling at him. But the parents don't know that they bring him here for discipline. But they handing their kids off to somebody they don't even know who they handed them off to. They didn't do a, a background check. Oh, how many fights you had, coach? What did you win? Who are you? What do you know? They're not doing that. That's like you, somebody telling you, yo, give me $30,000 a month for your kids to wish and I'm going to teach them. Just give them to me. First thing you're going to do is find out what do you know? What do he know? You know, speaking of that, how dangerous can that be, putting your hands, putting your kid's life in somebody's hands like that with the possibility of CTEs at an early age like that? Brain damage. One thing I train, the first thing I train is fundamentals, man. That footwork, you know, the next thing I teach after that, how to move your head with it. How get, not get, with get, it. not get hit. How to move your head with it. I don't even work on the, the hands into the lab. How to move your head with it. I don't believe in getting hit. You see my guys in the ring, man, you ask any of them. I'm the most protective coach you want to be because I know one thing, the less you get hit, the longer you last. But when you get coaches that don't know how to teach and what they do, they make up for about throwing everybody in the ring. They ain't got to do nothing. Just watch and have fun. They enjoy it. Everybody get hit. Boom, boom. Oh, yeah, they enjoying that. It's being a, being a freak fantasy inside of them somewhere. And they just see them get beat on. I hate to see people get hit. I hate it. It's not necessary. And I know what it feels like. I've been hit. I've been knocked down, cut, knocked out. I, nah, I don't want to see nobody go through that. And I'm here to protect them from it. I'm 44 years old, man. I, I don't think I, I sound like I took too many hits. No, not at all. Okay, okay. I'm making sure. I don't think you know. Yeah, I'm, look, I'm looking. I'm looking. I don't even see. I don't even see the scar tissue. <laughs> I don't even. I, I don't even see the scar tissue. Or anything. No, you had to be cuts, man. I had my bruises and bumps, though. You know what I mean? Okay, okay. I got my bruises and bumps, man. But, you know, I, I, I eat good, though, man. You know what I mean? I'm in shape. I'm in shape. You know, you know, even right now at your age, you're in shape. What, how important is nutrition and diet to a fighter's program? There is no program without nutrition and diet. There is no program. That's like saying, you're going to go say, man, I want to race, race my car and make some money. I want to race my car and you're going to put unleaded gas in it. Don't make no sense, do it. Rocked up. You know what I mean? They don't want that smoke, man. I'm on to on the top. You know what I mean? Back chisel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm on that, I'm on that work, man. So what do you what do you think about fighters that fluctuate and wait in between fights like that? They don't have a long career. I think we uh, froze up for a minute. Should get him back in a minute. You there, Coach? Oh, man, I think we froze up. I'm, I'm going to uh, exit out this live. Oh, you there, Coach? Yeah, oh, yeah, I'm there. There you go. <laughs> yeah, froze up for a minute. Yo, that point, listen, when you go up and down and wait like that, that'll mess, that'll mess up your kidneys, your liver. It's horrible on your body. That's why, that's why, let me tell you this, man. When you look at my career, and, and I'm an underachiever. And you say, damn, why? And why am I an underachiever? Just like I'm an underachiever, I got people that didn't go as far as I did that I'm friends with because they didn't have the discipline I had at that time. And just like it was with me, there is somebody that had more discipline than me. You look at Floyd. You see what I'm saying? And the ladder keep going. 
And the main thing is discipline, man. Discipline. Doing the right thing when it's easier to do the wrong thing. Discipline. Doing the right thing when it's easier to do the wrong thing. You know what I mean? You, you know, with that being said, who was the who was the the trainer coach that had uh, the biggest influence in your life? Fred Jenkins. I'll miss you. And you know, I can't say the biggest, but you know what I mean? Probably the most influential. Mm -hmm. I mean, everybody had their own, you know what I mean? Fred Jenkins, I'll miss you. You know what I mean? Everybody had their role, man. You know what I mean? Uh, Manuel Stewart, he played a big role. You know what I mean? Georgie Benton. I mean, they all played key roles that I can see how it helped develop me as a fighter and an individual. You know what I mean? I was so young, man. I was a kid, so I was a sponge. You know what I mean? You know, I, I heard you talk about Pernell Whitaker. Uh, talk about him and, and, and what he meant to you. Man, do you know, can you imagine a kid right now boxing and he said he go win a tournament or something and he become the best in, in his amateur, you know, weight division or whatever it's saying. They say, you know what? You so good, we taking you to spar. We taking you to go spar Floyd Mayweather. You know how you think they going to feel? Man, they're gonna be ecstatic, man. <laughs> the experience of a lifetime. I got the video. Matter of fact, I got the video. The video's on Instagram. Me, Zab Judah, Floyd Mayweather, Omar Sheikha, and somebody who's up there sparring Pernell Whitaker. We was with Louis dealing with Lou Duva's trainers at the time. You know what I mean? Rest in peace, Lou Duva. And Pernell Whitaker, man. Rest in peace Pernell also, man. You know, he took us in his home. He took us to the mall. He took us in a shoe store, man, and said, get whatever you want. I said, what? I said, all right, bet. I go over and I grab, it probably was a pair of Jordans. Bang, I'm grabbing these. And I grabbed them, I'm sitting at the counter like, waiting. And he looking at me like, that's all you want? And I'm like, I mean, I don't want to be greedy, you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't want to be greedy, man. He said, no, get what you want. I said, I got what I want. He said, get whatever you want. Zab hit me like, man, just come on. I said, okay. Man, listen. You ain't going, I mean, I can have boxes stacked to the ceiling. Zab had the boxes, man. You talking about clothes, shoes. And at the time, he had the S600. And this was probably 95, 94. So he had the big body joints. Big body joints. The big body joints, man. And this is the first time I've ever seen one in person. And we got in that joint, man. It was like a it was like a mansion. Like, this joint was huge in the inside, man. I'm big body friends at the time. You know, he took us to his crib, man. We ate. It was a heck of an experience. We sparred. You know what I mean? Uh, it was good sparring, me, Zaz sparring, Floyd sparring, and Pernell is the truth. He is definitely the truth, man. Rest in peace to Pernell, man. You know what I mean? He taught me a lot. You know what I mean? Verbally, his character, and with them hands. <laughs> <laughs> was, was he your favorite fighter of all time? I watched him daily. I watched him daily and as a kid, as an amateur. That's why I'm telling you he was so big to me. Because I watched him on, on and at the time, I didn't watch him on... TV, I watched him on VCR. So I literally got the tapes, the felt tapes of him, Mel Teller, that Olympic team. And we'll watch how they fought in the amateurs. Mark Brill, and I would watch all these dudes. I would literally go out and get these tapes of them. So it wasn't like something I found on YouTube. YouTube wasn't around him. So watching him, I was literally so being around him, and I'd never seen him on, so I didn't see him on Instagram, none of that. The only time I seen him was when he fighting on TV. So, I mean, it was a huge influence, man. I thank God for that experience with him. It was great. I loved every minute of it. You know, soaking up the knowledge from him, what's the biggest thing you took away from him? Slick like oil, man. I took away, it's, I took away the, uh, I mean, I got from him the ability to punch with zero notification. Do you know what that means? How can I get my hand from here to there and you not see it? Just think about it. Just do that. You know what I mean? Just do that. Do you see anything? Did, did I go like this and then throw it? I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't do that, right? I went like that. I, I just moved a hand. And nothing else moved first. I didn't adjust nothing and move. And that's becoming movement. It's not a thought and then a movement. The movement and a thought have to be one. So when you see it, the reflexes have to be able to move. You can't think about it. When you think, you will tell on yourself. You know what I mean? The ability to move, the, that's what I learned from me. Anyway. You know what I mean? I'm going to get into it and I'll break it down to the zeros of it. <laughs> You know, it's crazy because, uh, you know, I, I heard you talk about it before about a fighter and, and a boxer. It's, you know, fight, it, boxing is like a chess. 
chess match. And, 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 and you say you really didn't want to work with a fighter that was just rah, 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 just all into it. That's not what you were looking for. It, that's a fighter. That explain that. That's a fighter. He would be better maybe in UFC. When you're talking about the art of boxing, anger has no place there. Vengeance and aggression, that has no place in boxing. Boxing is an art. It's becoming one with the movement. It's becoming understanding, it's becoming peace. So with the aggression, aggression is, is it could be a good energy if used properly. Most people don't use aggression properly. Aggression properly would mean aggressive counterpunching. You see what I'm saying? I'm moving forward in aggression, but the aggression is not visible. You hear where I'm coming from? Yeah. I can still move forward and think. But most people use aggression and adapt to dress aggression with what? Anger? Anger. And you see that? But when you're using good good aggression, there's no anger in it. It's just emotion. And somebody asked real quick, Coach, before we go to the next question. How the sparring went with Pinnell and uh, Floyd? Man, when it went, I'm gonna tell you this: the work with Pinnell went good. It went, I mean, you know what I mean? I could, I mean, you know what I mean? We couldn't really do too much with him, you know what I mean? Pinnell was in a whole other league, man. I was probably 115 pounds, you know what I mean? He champion the world, you know what I mean? He screwed all of us, you know what I mean? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'll say Floyd probably did the best. I mean, well, Floyd probably did the best with him, and I say that because he got hit the less, you know what I mean? But I mean, and the work with me and Floyd, how work with me and Floyd when it went good. But I'm, I, I'd rather you ask him that. I'd rather somebody ask him. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna now, now, I gotta ask you about Philly fighters, man. How, about how special and, and just the grit and tenacity of a Philly fighter compared to to other cities. It ain't the same. I mean, well, you know, I'm not gonna say it ain't. The, it, it, I mean, it, it's 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 compatible with DC. Detroit, you know what I mean? New York. I mean, we got, you know what I mean? We, we, we got a lot in common, but you got other cities, not so much. You know what I mean? I ain't going to say no names, but you know what I mean? <laughs> no, nah, I get you, coach. I get you, coach. And that comes from the pedigree. That comes from the pedigree. All you do is look at the cities and look at the pedigree of fighters that came out of there. How many? How often? You know what I mean? That tells you a lot about them, just like coaches. It tells you how many fights they had. How can a coach teach you how to become world champion if he never did it? Sometimes it happens. It happens one in a million. It does. Because sometimes the coach can luck up with a great fighter. And he don't know how he did it. It happens. You know what I mean? I'm not saying it don't. But for you to just put your life into the hands of somebody to teach you how to be a real estate, a, a, a real estate broker, but he don't have, but all he ever did was work a cashier at Walmart, how is that going to work? But you paying him every day. And he don't mind. Well, I mean, why not? He's taking the money. You know, I had to ask you about this young Philly fighter, man, Boots Ennis, man. What's your thoughts on him man, and how how he's doing right now? For Boots Ennis? Yeah, because it's hard for him to get that step up fight. Don't nobody want to deal with him right now, man. Man, Boots Ennis is, how can I say this? Boots Ennis you ever hear? You ever hear? Have you ever heard that saying? You ever heard that, that rap Jay Z bro? He said, "You bubble till you blow." You said, "Bubble till you blow." You bubble till you blow. I don't remember what verse it was, but that's that's Boost Ennis. He bubbling right now. He bubbling. You know what I mean? He's waiting for his breakout fight. That's all he need. He just need a breakout fight. Boost Ennis, the truth. That's the truth. His dad, his dad got them hands. His brother got them hands. He come from a he come from a generation of hands, man. <laughs> You know what I mean? It's, in, it's, it's impossible for him not to be successful in boxing, man. His brothers got his brothers can fight. His dad, I mean, he in good hands. He got a good manager. He got Cameron Duncan working with him. He in good hands. He gonna he gonna he gonna be he gonna be something to look at, man. You know what I mean? For everybody, he gonna be a household name soon. Now, I, I wanted to ask you about a couple of fights in your career and and and, and just things that stand out to me. The Rocky Juarez fight. Let's go back to that. And, and, you know, because I, I just watched that again this morning, looking at that. How hard was it to go into his hometown, number one, deal with the, the, the judges and the ref who constantly was, was getting on you about holding behind the head, which, which I, I know it had to be frustrating to get into a rhythm. It was frustrating because I expected it. 
I knew I was being. I mean, you know what I mean. It. it, it I mean, the way the whole fight. I was. I was. I mean. Hey man, I. I, I, I mean, it just was a situation. You know what I mean, man. And that it, I shouldn't have been in. You know what I mean. But it was, and I didn't. I didn't cry about it, man. I just knew one thing in that fight that I knew that I was gonna win. And I was going to do everything I can. Even though they was taking it, I wanted to punch a ref right in his mouth. I ain't going to lie. I wanted to just hit him. But I knew I would lose. So I wasn't going to do nothing to stop me from losing. And I knew every round they taking it from me. But I come too far to quit. I wanted to just stop. Why don't we keep working hard for y'all just taking it from me? But I wasn't going to stop fighting, man. I, I didn't come that far to let it quit and just give it away. No, nah, we're going to have to fight. He hit me with a body shot, man. I'm not going to lie to you, man. I, I, I hit me with a body shot one time. My, my liver. It was a pain like somebody stabbed me, right? And it felt like my liver was trying to come out my mouth. Like he, boom, 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 boom. like I, I wanted to throw up and I couldn't, and he was coming. So you know what I thought? Time out, time, <laughs> time, <laughs> time. Yeah, I took a knee. I took a knee. We're gonna have to do this again next round. You got this one, but you ain't gonna knock me out. Oh wait, give me, give me a break. Oh, that hurt. Wait, I, I ain't too powerful. Nah, this is the art. You got this. Take this round. I wasn't going to stay there and keep trying to fight him and let him finish me. You know what I mean? I took a knee, man. I just kept fighting, man. All I know is I'm going to keep fighting. I ain't going to never quit. I ain't going to never quit. I'm going to keep going. You got to kill me. You know what I mean? Now, now the other fight, man, where a lot of people were, were trying to say that you were the, the, the tune-up, the Eric Morales fight, man, where you had to go out, out to, Los, out to uh, Cali for that, man, with the whole crowd against you and Matter of fact, Ring Magazine called it the upset of the year in 2005. And you know, that's amazing because I, I, when they offered me that fight, I almost cried. Man, I said, God, thank you. I've been praying for this, praying for this. Okay? So just imagine this kid over here praying and thank you all this time. I came out of limits in 96. I'm finally going to get a shot. I was just more than nobody want to fight me. And you know, it was just like, damn, finally. That's why I fought the Rocky War fight. I was willing to take any fights. And I was 165. And I went down to 125 for that fight. From 165 to 125? For that Rocky yeah. War fight, man. I ain't had no energy. I was dead. You know what I mean? And I don't like to say that. You just put an excuse that I was fighting my ass off, period. You know what I mean? So when you under, when you look at me now, you say, damn, well, how you doing to that age? Because it took me from a kid to now to figure out how to eat right. I didn't have the, when I was coming as a kid, I didn't have the internet. So all the information that come out now, I finally was able to attain it because for one thing, if you don't have buku money, how are you going to get the information? When you as, a, as an athlete, you're not going to, we're not going to college. They're not offering us that. They're not doing none of that. If you don't have the information, that have enough money or, 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 or intelligence to, to understand how to eat right and what it takes to perform the body, what the body needs to eat, what it needs to sleep and how to perform. Nah, you, it's a rat. It's a rat. It's like being in the ND, the NASCAR. But don't understand how to work on the engine. Don't know nothing about a tire, but you want to be a mechanic. It ain't going to work. It ain't going to work. You got to eat right, man. It's all about what you put in your body. And in all these years in my career, I wish I could have obtained it and looked like this when I was a kid. But one thing I know for sure is I listen to too many people that never boxed before tell me, don't lift weights. Don't lift weights. Don't lift weights. That's a bunch of bullshit. If I got my fights, I put them on them weights. And, it, and it's about not just lifting, but knowing what you're doing when you lift them. The, the, the strength and the speed that I got now, if I would have had that then, man, we would have a different conversation now. So when you say an underachiever, yeah, I didn't have the discipline that Floyd had. Floyd knew not to do certain things. Where I'm from the hood, we go party. We have a good time. I wasn't out there messing with drugs and all that, nah, but I was drinking. You know what I mean? And you know how that started, going to the clubs. I didn't like being in them. You know what I mean? But that's a book and that's another subject. You know, how hard was it for you during the Eric Morales uh, when that they really didn't want you to win? I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I didn't. When they offered me the fight, I thought my manager was Cameron Duncan. He worked for Top Rank. I didn't know that. The thing I know is, God, thank you. I called my dad and my brother said, we got the Morales fight. Let's go. I went to the Nevada mountains. Roshad Wells, God bless him, peace. I rented a house from him in Las Vegas. He was on the Olympic team with me. And I stayed up there, man. I fasted, I prayed, and I trained. That's what I did every day. I didn't look at TV. I didn't go nowhere. And I trained, I fasted, I prayed, and that's all I did for 90 days straight. When I came out them darn mountains to fight Eric Morales, you couldn't tell me I wasn't going to win. You understand that? So when I got to the weigh-in and see... 
the promotion. Pacquiao Morales, and I'm thinking, wait, 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 wait. Why, 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 wait, why I don't see Raheem and Morales? Because it was really the build up to the fight, because Morales had just beat Pacquiao. So now, instead of them fighting again, they say, let's put them on the same card and make money off the show and then bring them back. But if they give them a rematch right away, they ain't going to make as much money. Nah, let's milk the game. Let's do a tournament. Pacquiao fight Bad Squares, Morales fight Raheem, and the winners fight each other. Great. I'm in for the tournament. Let's do it. I went up there and did what I had to do. They didn't give me training expense money and train and put me with a super conditioner. They didn't give me the best training in the world. None of that. I paid for it out of my own pocket. I went up there and did what I had to do. While they paid for Ed Morales' training expenses, they paid for him to give him the best because he was the biggest star they had. So they gave him the, everything he had. I'm a kid from the inner city. They didn't give me nothing. I, God gave me everything. I went up there with the knowledge I had from a kid and did everything I can do. I didn't go up there with the best strength and conditioner. With the best. No, I didn't go up there with none of that, man. I went up there with what God gave me and did everything I can to win. You understand what I'm saying? And I did it. I went and walked out of a stadium between 20,000 people screaming for me to lose against me. I didn't feel threatened. I didn't think once I was going to lose. I didn't think, oh, man, no. My energy was confident. And it was still a guy. And I walked through the 20,000 people when they kicked his butt and walked back out. What they going to do? When you want God, which who can be against you? Do you see what I'm talking what? about? You know, with that win, why didn't the next fight happen? After the fight, I wasn't as surprised. I won. I prayed, prayed, and trained for it. I was excited. Yes, I won. I jumped on Bob Aram and tied the buff like, yes, we won. We won. They looked at me like, we didn't win. You won. Wow. <laughs> this is my promoter. That's, my promoter. That, that's crazy. That's crazy. So guess what? That's okay. The, the next day, guess what? I wake up. I'm the champ. Yes. Okay. So when the next fight? We're doing the rematch cards. Yeah, I mean, the re I mean not the rematch, the, uh, the tournament. So when me and Pacquiao fight? Hello, when we met Pacquiao fight? Phone just wrong. Hello, when me and Pacquiao fight? And guess what? Two months later, I went to the Pacquiao Morales fight. It was sitting in a, in, a, in a nosebleed with my girl watching it. How hurt were you behind that? Just imagine it. I'm in the nosebleed watching it. They didn't even pay for a ticket. They didn't even invite me there. And I'm sitting in the nosebleed for a ticket that I paid for. It. And I'm looking at it while I'm watching a fight. And they inviting, and they are inviting other fighters into the ring. Such and such is here. They even announced Floyd one time, I think. No, nah, no, nah, De La Hoya. Oscar De La Hoya. I'm in the nosebleed just watching this, this crap. Like, this game is crazy, man. This game is crazy. And they never fought. We never fought. But guess what, though? We're going to fight. We're going to fight. We're we going to fight in Dubai. That's what's going to happen. Man, Pac, y'all going to fight in Dubai. That's what's going to happen. He going to get this work. He ain't going to run. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, hey, Coach, we're going to talk about oh, – because uh, Instagram, you know, they got the hour limit. I'm going to end this one, and then I'm going to bring you right back on. All right, all right, bet, bet. All right, all right.